Okay everyone, welcome back. Um, I believe this is part 13 of our bathroom tutorial series. So on this episode we're going to fix some of those rendering issues we were having with the window and stuff. They're real easy to fix. So first off, I'm going to bring everything back from unhidden by hitting Alt-H to unhide everything that we uh, hit in the last episode. Now our problem was, and I'll try to show you real quick, it might lag my PC a bit, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Alt-A deselect everything. I'm going to turn it on. Turn on uh, render view. I'll get in the camera position. And we're going to look at this wall right here, so it might lag a bit. So you notice the window isn't actually open. So we're going to turn that off. The window basically isn't actually open, even though we have a cut right here with a boolean. And that's because we're still rendering these uh, block objects that we're using for the boolean cut. Um, even though they look like they're wireframe, they still render in the engine. So that's an easy thing to fix. All you have to do is come over to the object properties. Um, if we come down to cycle settings, this will turn it off specifically for cycles. So we want to get rid of the camera. So now it won't show up on the camera, but it will still calculate light and stuff. So we need to make sure we just turn off everything because this object doesn't need to be actually rendered at all. Um, and I believe... You could also make sure that it's turned off up here by just clicking Disable Object and Renders, but I'm just going to play it safe and uh, disable everything real quick. So now it won't show up in Cycles at all. So you'll see if I tab over here, you can see now light's passing through it and that object isn't there anymore. So yeah, so that's now fixed. Um, there's other problems that I wanted to address. Um, I think mainly though what we can do for right now is add more models to our scene um, and I think I also want to make this glass a little bit more noticeable um, and there's a couple ways we can do that um, I think for now what I'll do is I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker so we can do that by selecting our object um, I'm gonna hit shift H to single it out and we're gonna go to shading and then let's see here um, so it's actually hard to tell in Eevee because it's you know, it, it doesn't render glass the best. Um, the, and you see, if we turn on cycles, it isn't very clear what's happening because it's, there's nothing in the scene. So what I'm going to do is go to base color right here, and I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Not a lot, because we just want it to be a bit more noticeable. Um, and we're going to add some roughness to it later um, to really, like, uh, show, like, um, like, watermarks or maybe smudges, because nothing... Nothing in the real world, world is perfect, so by adding a bit of dirt, we can not only show that the glass is there a bit better, but it'll also just look more realistic. So, with that change, we're going to hit Alt-H to set everything back to normal. Um, and looking at our references real quick. Okay, so looking at our references real quick, um, we can see that there's a couple things we can add. Um, for now, I think we're going to add just the basic models on the shelf over there. Um, and we might also add some lights. And I think that's it. That sh should be enough for this episode. And then maybe in the next one, we'll add um, a realistic looking cloth. So for now, let's move this over here. So yeah, let's get started on those bottles. So this is going to be kind of similar to how we've been modeling everything else before. Um, we're going to create a cylinder, um, eyeballing my reference over here. It's basically just cylindri cylindrical. It's nothing too complicated. So here's a cylinder. We're going to give it 16, eh, we'll leave it at 32 actually. So 32 vertices. Um, we want noth uh, we'll go with nothing for right now. So it has, I'll turn off back face culling so you can see. So we just don't have a top or bottom, we just have the faces to deal with. Um, mm, actually, I'm going to leave back face culling on because it's hard to see with, uh, through the wall otherwise. So, I guess we can just kind of start modeling it. And I'm actually going to hit Alt-H to bring back our human and pull him to the side. So, we can again, kind of reference it a bit. And the models don't have to be perfect. We can always tweak them later. Um, so, for right now, I'm just going to shrink this down by going into edit mode by hitting tab and scaling it down. And we kind of base it off our references, just kind of eyeballing it again. I think that's fine enough for the size. Um, and what we need to do is we need to add this sort of tapering to the top and then we'll also add a base. So let's start with the base. So I'm going to hit period to zoom in on it while it's selected and we're going to 
tab into edit mode, hit Alt A to deselect everything, and I'm going to Alt click in edge mode, edge, edge select mode, and I'm just going to hit E, and I'm going to bring this down a bit. I'm going to scale it in to kind of add a bit of a, uh, yeah, that should actually, we'll do this a bit differently. Um, so I'm undoing everything. Um, how should we do that? I guess we could do it proportion by proportion. So I'm going to hit E and then right click and then deselect. Push it in a bit, E, right click to deselect, and then scale it in a bit more. I think that's enough of a tapering. And then I'm just going to hit E, right click to deselect, uh, scale it in a little bit to add more of a supporting edge, and E, right click, and then hit Alt M, and then merge at center. So now we have a bottom. I'm going to Alt A to deselect everything, and then Alt click this ring right here. And now we're going to start working on that tapering. So I'm going to hit E and then drag it up a bit. And again, this isn't a perfect science. We're just going to kind of make it flow a bit. So all I'm doing right here is I'm extruding and then right clicking and pulling it up to it till it looks nice and tapered. And we'll go a little bit more. I think that looks good. So now I'm going to make the neck of the bottle kind of stretching up. And then it kind of comes to a blunt point. So we're going to hit E and then drag it up. Now I'm going to hit E, and then I'm going to right-click to deselect, and then scale it out a bit. It kind of looks like that. Uh, we'll actually scale it in a little bit. And then E. Just keep on dragging it, and then we're going to make kind of a little bump. So I'm, ext I'm just extruding and uh, scaling and dragging all these faces. Extrude again. Pull it up. I'm going to hit E, scale it in, and then this will be the end of it. This will be kind of where the nozzle points out. E, pull it up. And I think that looks good. Um, and then now we want to add the, uh, like the nozzle, I guess, <laughs> whatever you call it. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to hit E, and then I'm going to scale it up. But then I want to kind of make it... Um, Let's, I'm, you'll see the shape I'm going for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit S to scale, and I'm going to lock it on the Y. I'm going to scale it in a bit, and then I'm going to drag it a bit forward. Um, and then I'm going to hit S and then X. I'm going to scale it out a bit more. And we'll kind of see how this looks. I'm going to hit E and then scale it up. I'm going to hit E and scale it in a little bit, leaving a supporting edge. Should have probably did that for the bottom. What we can do is I'm going to add a bevel here real quick because I kind of want to fix this. So for the bevel, all we have to do is um, hit Alt click to select this edge. I'm going to hit Control B. Um, alternatively, you could also go over here to the bevel tool, but Control B is the shortcut for it. And I'm just going to add um, scroll up to add one supporting edge, and that's fine. I'll actually do the same on the top. So I'm going to get rid of these edges by hitting X and delete. Um, Actually, what we need to do is, can we do face select, I believe? Yeah, so I'm going to go into face select and alt click to select that ring of faces. I'm going to hit X and delete faces. I'm going to go back into edge select mode and then click. And then I'm going to hit E and then I'm going to hit alt M, merge at center. I'm going to click on this edge ring right here and then hit control B, make that edge loop. And it still has the settings what I did on the bottom. So that looks good. Um, yeah, that looks fine. I kind of want to stretch it out a bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into face select mode. I'm going to hit Alt A to deselect everything, hit C, and I'm just going to circle select this top row. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select more faces by hitting, holding down control and hitting plus on my numpad until it gets down to the bottom faces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit S and then X and we're just going to, oh, mm, what's it doing here? Okay, so maybe we just have to select, I'm going to hit, hold down control and hit minus so we go back some faces. That's what we want. So we don't want to select the bottom faces. So 
I'm going to hit S and then X, and we're going to scale it out a bit more. And then I'm just going to drag it forward. And I might, there might uh, be some shading errors with all that, with all the geometry kind of scrunched up like that. Um, but it, this is going to be far away anyways, and I think it looks pretty good for what we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Object, and I'm going to Shade Smooth. And you notice we have some weird lighting errors, and that's because we have these rough 90 degree angles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Object Data over here. Which one is it? Um, object Data. I'm going to go to Auto Smooth. And you'll see that kind of fixes those hard edges. And since this is going to be far away from the camera, um, it shouldn't be too big a deal. You can see if I tweak the uh, angle amount over here, well, it can smooth out certain faces. So setting it at about 38, um, we'll leave these smooth faces on the bottom, but it'll leave the rough like 90 degree edges on the sides. Um, so I think that looks good. Um, and if we kind of look at the reference real quick, we can see it kind of cycles between this black and white uh, striping. So we can do that real quick as well with materials. So I'm going to add a couple of loops right here for um, the materials. So I think that should be fine. So I'm going to add four edge loops like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect everything. I'm going to go over to the shading options. I'm going to hit plus, 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 plus to add two materials. I'm going to name one black. And then I'm going to name the other white. And I'm going to go, so the object's mostly black. So the first shader um, that I created, I believe, will be assigned to everything. So we're going to reassign it anyway. So while selecting the black shader, I'm going to press A to select every face. And then I'm going to hit Assign. And then I'm going to hit Alt-A to deselect everything. And I'm going to select the white shader. And then I'm going to go into face mode. And I'm going to Alt-click um, these rows kind of alternating like that. And then I'm going to hit Assign. So we're going to have a stripe pattern going on. And now all we have to do is come over to our shaders here. And we're going to make um, we're going to go to shading mode real quick. And we're going to hit period to focus in on our object. Um, and all we have to do is change the color. So we're going to change this to a nice black, a hard black. And then we're going to go to white. And we're going to make sure this is all the way up to white. Um, and I think that looks good. Um, we might want to tweak the uh, roughness, though. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit shinier. We're going to set it to 0 0.2. We're going to do that in both the white and black. So 0.2 on the roughness. Uh, maybe that's a little too much. The reflection is easier to notice on the black. We'll try 0.38 on both of well, them. That should look fine. And again, this isn't realistic rendering. So, yeah. So we have a nice little uh, thing here. And we didn't have to UV unwrap it because we're just assigning materials to it. And since it's going to be far away from the camera, we don't really have to worry about making it adding uh, roughness maps or anything to make it look, uh, oh, excuse me, make it look more uh, realistic. So now that we have one of our bottles, we're going to just drag it over here and we're going to go into, we're going to click this green dot to go into the side view. I'm going to hit Z and turn on wireframe and we're just going to kind of position it over here. Since it's a little big for our cutout, what we're going to do is hit tab to go into edit mode and I'm going to press A and I'm just going to scale it all down a little bit just so it looks like it fits a bit better. And you can kind of see the uh, cutout right here, what's the, where the wall is. Um, obviously it's not the same on the Y axis, so we just gotta slide it over a bit. Um, and then there's two of them in our reference here, so we're gonna stick a little bit closer to the reference by adding two of them. So I'm gonna turn off wireframe, you can hit Alt, you can hit Z and then go over, or you can click up here to change it to solid. What we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift D and then right click to deselect and we're just going to slide this over. Um, looks like I was a little bit off so we can actually afford to slide these back a bit. So we're going to select both of them by hitting Shift click. We're just going to slide it back. Um, and it looks like they could still afford to be a bit smaller. So while they're both selected, again, we can hit Tab to edit both of them at the same time. And we're going to hit S and we're just going to scale them down a bit. Um, tab out of edit mode. Kind of just drag them down. And that should be fine. Um, the origin for these objects are a little messed up. So real quick, I'm going to select one, go to Object, um, Set Origin, Center of Mass, Object, 
set origin, center of mass. So now we have two soap things, and I'm gonna, just going to slightly rotate them a bit. So I'm going to hit R and then Z. And just to give them a bit of randomness so they don't look like they've been per perfectly facing the same direction. So um, now that that's in place, I'm going to quickly save real quick. How are we doing on time? Um, I think we're about hitting the time for this episode. So in the next one, we're just going to quickly make a bar of soap. And then... What else? Um, we want to add lights at the top. So in the next episode, we're going to make a quick bar of soap, and we're going to add cool lighting. So um, thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you have any input, um, and we're going to go on to the next one.